I want to start this class by saying something a little bit strange. I want you to stop watching my videos. Let me explain why. I spend all of my time and effort trying to give the power back to the students. You see, there are a lot of problems in the world of language learning right now, but the main problem is that learning a language has become a product. If you want to learn a language, you need this course, or this workbook, or this system, or this exam. But the truth is that learning a language is and has always been about the people. It's a democracy. The people have the power. And I spend a lot of my time trying to convince people that they don't need any of this rubbish to learn a language. So, if you come to me and say, Christian, I don't watch your videos anymore because now I live in English. I'm, I'm a happy man. That is, for me, that is success. I have succeeded in giving the power back to you. And I really hope that you all realize this very soon, that you don't need any of this stuff to really succeed at learning a language. Tony Robbins, the motivational speaker, he said that people think that it takes 10 years to change. But the reality is that the change happens in a moment. It takes you 10 years to realize that you can make the change. So, recently I made a class about how to pass an English exam without using a workbook. You should throw the workbook in the bin. And you don't even need a teacher, you can teach yourself. And a lot of people expressed skepticism about this. How can I learn English without a teacher, without a book? And today, I'm going to show you how you can learn and really succeed at learning a language without any resources and without any teacher. Because the reality is that most people in this world have no access to resources or teachers or any type of education. But that doesn't mean that you can't learn. And my goal today is to give you back some of that power that I really want you to have. To give this class some structure, I'm going to take one of the units from this workbook and we're going to learn all of the things in this unit without the workbook. I'm going to show you that you don't need the workbook to learn all of this stuff. So, in, uh, in this chapter, it's called Face the Music. It's about fame and celebrity and, and musicians. We're going to learn some phrasal verbs. We're going to learn the passive tense. We're going to listen to a news report. We're going to speak comparing pictures. We're going to write describing an event. And we're going to learn some expressions with go. We're going to do all of this stuff from the book without the book. Now, when you're learning, you always want to learn stuff that's interesting to you personally so that you're excited about it. So choose a musician, a celebrity that you really like, that you're interested in. Uh, today I have chosen Adele because I think she's a funny person and she has a great voice. So let's learn all of this stuff using Adele. And the first place to start is of course the internet. So all I did was I just opened up a web browser and I googled Adele fame. And there were two really interesting stories that I found. One was this one from the Mail Online about Adele and her 100 show world tour. The other story was about Adele and her postpartum depression and the downsides of fame.
So let's look at the first one. So the title is Hitting the Right Bank Notes. Adele earned a whopping £142 million from her 100 show world tour, but only paid herself a third of the profits. Now, maybe this word here, whopping, whopping. What does it mean, whopping? If I look at the context, it means something big, right? Obviously, 142 million pounds is a lot of money. I have a new, a new piece of vocabulary, whopping. Let's read some more. Um, it's no wonder Adele raked in a whopping 142 million pounds profit. Wow, okay. Which kicked off in 2016. So here I have, in this one sentence, I have a repetition of my new vocabulary, whopping. So I get the idea it's a big amount. But also, I have two phrasal verbs, raked in and kicked off. Now, I can, if I know what those words mean, what those phrasal verbs mean, great. If not, I can look them up. But I know that they are related to fame and music and singing because this is reality. You see, what you get from reality that you don't get from a workbook is the English that people really use every day. That's what we want, an authentic experience. So raked in means to yeah, rake in, <laughs> it's my money. And to kick off means to start. Think about a game of football. A game of football begins with the kickoff. Okay, so I have two new phrasal verbs, some new vocabulary. Let's continue reading. Records revealed on Wednesday that the singer's company, Remedy Touring, made the hefty sum from both ticket and merchandise sales. Okay, we have another adjective, a hefty sum. Hefty. So again, I get the idea that this means something big, right? A hefty sum. It's a synonym for whopping, whopping and hefty. Great. Um, okay, then we have a photo of her in a green dress, looking good, Adele. Um, and then it says, according to The Sun, the hit makers company made close to 70 million pounds profit during the Adele Live with the remaining funds covering the tour's costs. Hit maker. That's a new noun, a new piece of vocabulary. A person who makes hits. And, you know, we, we see some vocabulary relating to tours. A tour. Okay, great. Um, now this sentence. The sum means Adele made more than one million pounds per show. Okay, so you could call it a performance or a show. Now I know there's some synonyms. She performed 121 dates between February 2016 and June 2017 in Europe. North America and Oceania. Dates. So now I know there are three synonyms. I can call them a performance or a, a show or a date. I'm learning all of this new vocabulary related to fame and music and it's all authentic. Okay, the final sentence. However, the singer is believed to have pocketed 42 million herself with her company using the rest for future projects. Pocketed. Maybe you didn't know that pocket. Okay, pocket was also a verb. And they're using it in the past. To put something in your pocket is the verb to pocket. So all of this stuff, it's real, it's authentic. And we can continue with the next story. This is about the downside of fame. We know that up is good, we're happy, we're up, and then down is bad, you know, down is bad. So there's a downside to fame. You know, then we can read this. Um, and we're interested, we want to know about Adele, we love Adele. Now, the writing. So remember, again, we really want to make this something personal to us. We want to write a description of an event. So write about an event that you went to. Now, 
You want to push yourself, okay? You don't want to be safe, you want to push yourself. So we need to incorporate some of the things we learnt before. So some of those phrasal verbs, the new vocabulary, uh, the, the new grammar that we learnt, and also maybe we're going to look for some synonyms in our thesaurus. You need a dictionary, okay, to, to, to look up words that, that you're not sure of in your language. If you don't have physical copies of these, you can find them for free on the internet. And then we're just going to write a description of an event we went to. Um, how did we feel about it? How did it smell? How did it feel? Did you go with your friends, with your family? All of these open questions where you really have to use your imagination and activate this, that just stimulates the learning process. And all you need is a pencil and a piece of paper. Now, one other thing we have to do is to compare some pictures and talk about them. So, maybe you don't have the vocabulary for comparing pictures, you're not sure about contrast. Well, look for a quick class on YouTube or, or just Google how to compare, how to make comparisons. But that's not the focus. We don't want to focus on the class, the grammar. No, we want to focus on actually making comparisons. So I've Googled Adele, I click on images, and then I have lots of different images of Adele. Mm, so I'm going to choose two and compare them. Okay, um, this one here, right, where she has all of these awards in her, um, in her arms. And then maybe this one here, where her hair is, is completely different, right? So I can say, um, in this picture, Adele has her hair up. And her skin looks really flawless and glowing. But in the other picture, in the other picture, um, her hair is totally different. It's more tousled. Yeah, more like wild. <laughs> um, her skin also looks good, but she doesn't look very happy. In the other picture, she looks happy. In this picture, she doesn't look so happy. Um, uh, also, what else? In, the, in this picture, she's wearing a green dress with beads. Okay, with beads and, and, and other things. And she's wearing some gold earrings. And in this picture, she's, um, she's wearing a black top, like maybe a V-neck top. Okay? So, some of this vocabulary you're going to have to look up. Okay? But, at least you know it's real. And it's authentic. Now, some listening. Now, when you're practicing your listening, I recommend not watching a video, but just audio only. Because when you're watching a video, you have other visual clues to help you, like gestures, mouth position, all of these things. Uh, if you really want to practice pure listening, headphones and, and you know, your phone or your computer um, or the radio. But I spent a few minutes looking on my telephone for some podcasts. I found lots of interviews with Adele where she's talking about fame and her life. Now, maybe I'm only going to understand 50%. And really, that's not ideal, but at least it's realistic. You see, listening to those listenings from the, the workbooks, it's just a false representation of how people speak. And it doesn't prepare you for the reality of having a conversation where you only understand half of what people are saying. And you have to 
start understanding from context. You have to suffer, be lost, be confused. All of that stuff is part of the learning process. Now, you don't have to do it here in the office. You can listen to this when you're on the train, on the bus, when you're going for a walk, when you're in bed. Um, it's about incorporating English into your life and making it interesting, right? I mean, don't you want to hear the interview with Adele? And that's it. We just went through everything that was in that chapter of the book without using the book at all. Now, maybe you're thinking, Christian, that was a waste of my time. You didn't teach me anything. Anybody could do that. That's exactly my point. It's about changing your mentality. The, the workbooks and the courses and the systems, they don't contain anything special at all. Anybody can learn like this. It's about you realizing that that is learning. Just because you're not in front of a list, you're not suffering, you're not like constantly memorizing things, it doesn't mean you're not learning. This is authentic learning, real learning that prepares you to go out there and do that job interview and have that conversation at the pub and fall in love. That's what I want for you guys. Well, I hope that you found this class interesting. If you would like to support free English education, then you can consider becoming my patron on Patreon, or you can buy some incredible Kangaroo English merchandise. The links for both are down below. I'm Christian, this is Kangaroo English. I'll see you in class. Or maybe not. Maybe I'll never see you in class again. But either way, just remember, you have the power.